welcome to another video about the Car Pilot Pro. And uh, today I'm out here at the water, been fishing for a couple of days, doing home office. And before I leave now, I will make a video uh, about game controllers, which you can use to control your bait boat using the Carp Pilot Pro. And I got a collection here, going to present them all, tell you about them, pros, cons and so on. This is a PlayStation 4 controller. And what you can do, I have a bait boat in front of me, it's connected, uh, so I can uh, drive. I can control the lights. Lights. I can run the bait thrower on the top. Bait thrower. I can open the bait trays. Bait tray left. Bait tray right. And I can even go to a waypoint of choice and do automatic feeding with the press of one button. Driving to target. Nice. So if you have a dimmer or you have latching servos, then you can turn them on and off. One button click Light. on, one button click off. And release. As you will see later, it's possible to drive with one stick, like I do here now. You can only use one stick for driving when you have driving and steering combined. So you select either the left one or the right one. But you also have a choice to divide so you have the throttle on one stick and the steering on the other stick. And then you can also choose which stick should be a throttle and which stick should be uh, steering. So first out is the PlayStation 4 controller. This is actually not a genuine one. It's a copycat, uh, but the quality is great. It's not that expensive. And it works really, really well. It's my personal favorite. And the reason is that I use uh, the phone or the tablet uh, on a tripod, on a camera tripod. So then I don't need uh, any way to hold the screen. I just have this in with me. You turn it on and off here. And yeah, charges by USB-C. Next out is... Um, a controller that can hold a phone or a tablet. So this is capable of holding around 10 inch uh, tablets. So this is an IPEGA 9167. So here's the IPEGA with a 10 inch tablet uh, attached. Holds fairly securely. It's uh, really nice if you want to scan an area driving in manual mode uh, and add some waypoints and so on. Uh, the second IPEGA is a uh, 9083S and it can take enormous tablet. I need to put it away here. You can release here and drag out. Really nice, feels solid. Good quality, highly recommended. So if you want to use it, you actually have to run it like this. And it's a bit hard to control. Not really recommended. It looks really awesome. But for Android, I can get it to work as a mouse. Actually quite good controllers from Nintendo, Joy-Con. Uh, this works uh, well. Uh, they have some hardware issues, may have at least. 
which makes the controller, in my case it's the right one, not uh, return to zero, causing what gamers call drift. These do not come with USB plug, at least not these ones. So I bought a charging cable and if I remove this, then this charging cable simply plugs on like this. And then the LED lights here will show red when it's charging and then green when fully charged. Now I know um, game controller using that to control your bait boat, it's really cool, uh, but it might not be for you. So here's a couple of arguments to consider if this is something you should spend time and money on at all. You need to be aware of one thing, uh, the Marvin Inc. connection needs to be good uh, with a speed of at least 57.6 and it's highly recommended that you also do a Mavlik connection test so you know when it passes beyond the reach of the Mavlink. And here's how you do that. Testing your maximum Mavlik distance is uh, good for several reasons and it's really easy to do. Uh, go into settings and enable ground control station failsafe and make sure the failsafe action is returned to launch. Then add a waypoint far, far away, like a kilometer or ring more, doesn't matter, just beyond what you expect the possible reach is. Then put the boat on the water, tap on that marker and that will make Carpalo Pro trigger go to. And then just sit down and relax and Welcome when home. you reach the face safe, have a look at the screen and see how far away are you from the home points. Let's have a look at how we configure our game controller. And first of all, CarPilot Pro integrates directly with game controllers. Please do not install companion apps. Instead, head over to the menu. You go into app settings, scroll down, find game controller and select it. As you see here, game controller is disabled by default. So in order to configure our game controller and start using it, we just switch that button and then we can use game controllers. Now, if all you want to do is to just use a game controller to drive the boat, then this is all there is to it. Just enable use game controller and that's it. But some additional setting comes up, which you need to take into account. And by default, the second option here, default is that we drive with single stick, meaning that we steer and give gas with one stick only. And the second option for the single stick is to drive with uh, the left stick or the right stick. So just change to suit your preferences if you want to use dual stitch, then select that instead. And then the option below will be left stick throttle, right stick steering. If you want it in the opposite direction, you just tap that. I personally prefer to use the single stick, so I can move these in it. The fourth option here is to use go to or go to plus function. This is when we select a button to use a go to action. It will be clearer later, so we come back to that. And then we have the joystick setting, which is a tuning of the joystick. This is, by the way, the same uh, settings shared with the on screen joystick. So we come back to that later as well. Now we've gone through all of the settings needed to drive the boat, with the exception of the tuning of the joystick. Then if you want to do more than just driving, then the last option comes into play. So let's select that. 
When we configure the use of buttons on the game controller, we start by selecting which buttons. These are the buttons. Here we select if we will use it or not use it. The action is a drop down list. You just tap it. And then you select which function you want to perform. The six actions on the top, they are mode switches. Can you switch into the selected mode like manual? Uh, the next options are arming or disarming the motor. It only applies if you have enabled arm disarming. Then we have the add a marker, which will add a marker where the boat is currently on the water. And then finally, you have four go to buttons and they numbered one, two, three, and four. If you select number two, then the boat will go to waypoint number two and you press that button. In the other settings screen, if you selected go to plus instead of go to, then it will do go to plus instead. Now let's look into how we configure the joysticks. And then we have the joystick settings here. So we have settings for the steering, we have settings for the truffle, and we have settings for channels. Let's start at the bottom at channels. If you have set the boat up exactly like the default settings in autopilot, then you don't have to do anything. It will be steering channel as one and throttle channel as three. Now let me just expand throttle and steering and zoom in a little. Let's do reversing first for steering and the same for a throttle. If your boat turns right, then you turn the joystick to the left. Or if your boat moves backwards, when you thrust the joystick forward, then simply hit reverse and try again. If your boat moves too slowly, just increase the max and decrease the minimum. So this is for steering and you have the similar for a throttle. If you struggle with drift on the joystick, then you can increase the dead zone for steering and for throttle and then eliminate the drift and your Nintendo joystick will work just fine. Before we complete these settings information for the game controller, let's first set up our servo buttons. That's done in the servo menu. So now I will have four buttons available that represents my gear. Start with the left bay tray as an example. Power on your boat, connect the app. Setting up a servo button is very easy. You don't have to guess. So if I now move my left stick to the left. I see that that's 1051. And if I release it again, I'm back to 1500. So on for this function will be 1051. And since I use two on one channel, I'll set this to 1500 and then the right will be the opposite. This is not a dimmer, so we leave that. It is for me a momentary server. I want it like that. And I'm going to do it for two seconds. As it is a baiting function, I also want to use it in go to plus. So this first button I set up to get with you. Then I have the right bay chain on the same channel four. This is the high setting and both are off in the middle position. Then I have the bay tray. It's on channel six. And I have the lights on channel five. Channel five is a dimmer. So now I'm done and we can head back and assign some game controller buttons also to these functions. So everything is now done. We go back. And then we re-enter the game controller setting and here. 
So let me set everything up like I personally want it. And remember to save. So now we're done setting up the, the team controller and the tune in the joystick. I can return back to repeat a uh, setup so that my servos are X or uh, left pay tray. If I press X, pay tray left. Really see it. If I press the B, the one to the right, pay tray right. If I press the top, Bait thrower, and if I press white, light, and if I press light again, and if I want to go to waypoint number two, for instance, then I remember that there's the second button, which is the D-pad up. So if I press that, driving to target, I do go to, to waypoint number two. If I then go back into manual mode, I can also use the joystick and drive the bolt. And by the way, now I've released it, I can still use the on-screen joystick whenever I like. I'll continue driving here. Or I can use the RC radio as well. Obviously, only one means of steering at any time. So that's game controllers. Thanks.